This is Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast where we bring Jesus into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. What's up, guys? Welcome to the show. I am Jason. This is Sports Spectrum. Our website is sportspectrum.com. It's a great place to start here when you're thinking about what Sports Spectrum has to offer, including our podcasts, including different stories and articles, devotionals. It's all available at our website, sportspectrum.com. And then, of course, you can email me if you'd like to get in touch with us for a guest idea, show topic, some feedback, whatever it is. Maybe you know of a story that we need to be telling here at Sports Spectrum. You can email me, jason at sportspectrum.com, jason at sportspectrum.com. And today's program is presented by our friends at Ronald Blue Trust. Their advisor is applying biblical wisdom and technical expertise to help their clients make wise financial decisions experiencing clarity and confidence, and leave a lasting legacy. Man, it's 2021 now, and we all want to be making uh, wise financial decisions. We all want to experience clarity. We all want to leave a lasting legacy. We got a lot of questions regarding our financial situations. Ronald Blue Trust has those answers. We trust them. We think you will as well. You need to go check out their website, ronblue.com, for more. ronblue.com, that is Ronald Blue trust. Today on Sports Spectrum, we are pleased to welcome back Daryl Strawberry, the eight-time Major League Baseball All-Star and the four-time World Series champion. I don't need to go through all the accolades that Daryl has had because we would be here for quite a long time, but he was the Rookie of the Year in 1983. He played with the Mets, the Dodgers, the Giants, and the New York Yankees. He's a member of the New York Mets Hall of Fame. As I mentioned, four-time World Series champion He's also a New York Times bestselling author, which a lot of people don't realize because his book, Straw, reached the New York Times bestsellers list way back when, about 11 years ago or so. And now Daryl has written a brand new book, and it's called Turn Your Season Around, How God Transforms Your Life. And this book released January 12th, releases January 12th, 2021 with Zondervan And Daryl Strawberry is our guest today on the show. And we talk a lot about discipleship with Daryl. Of course, I mix in some baseball. I mean, listen, it's not a dirty little secret here. I'm a Mets fan, and Daryl Strawberry was my sports hero when I was 10 years old. And Daryl and I are now friends. Daryl has written the foreword to my first book, Live to Forgive. He's also contributed a very nice uh, testimonial for my second book, The Uniform of Leadership. And now Daryl has his new book out called Turn Your Season Around, And like I said, Daryl's a friend. And so this conversation, I hope it sounds like two friends talking to each other. But Daryl loves Jesus. It really is his one priority in life right now. When I talk to him, every time I talk to him, we always talk about Jesus. We don't talk about politics. We don't talk about baseball much unless I ask a question about it. We don't talk about anything else really going on in the world. We just talk about Jesus. And that's his desire is to talk about Jesus and tell others about who Jesus is. And I hope that comes across in our conversation here today with the four-time World Series champion, the eight-time MLB All-Star, Daryl Strawberry, joins us here and returns to Sports Spectrum. Let's take a listen. Daryl Strawberry, welcome back to Sports Spectrum, my brother. How are you? (laughs) I'm doing good, my brother Jason. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. It's, it's, it's been a while, but you know it's been a wild, crazy ride we've been going through, and but we're still here. We uh, still. That's here. the most important thing. That's right. God's not finished yet. If we're still here, which is a great thing. Um, I want to start. You're going to laugh at this. I want to start with a highlight. So last week I was I was working, you know, and doing an interview, and uh, I was on YouTube, and you know, YouTube is great for finding these hidden gems, especially of an athlete's career. So this might this one might not be a gem for you, but it was from a game in August of 1990. Um, Phillies Mets, Pat Combs is on the mound for Philadelphia. Your buddy Doc Gooden is on the mound for the Mets. Pat Combs hits Doc on a pitch. Doc charges. A brawl ensues, and there's mass chaos that takes place. Do you remember this game when I when I mention this? I do remember. <laughs> Of course, what? I remember that game. You know, what happened? You know, what happened? I, it, it was just one of those things. I think Doc hit somebody, and he, when he came back up, you know, the 
Pat Collins retaliated, you know, and, and then that's what happened in that situation. And then we just broke out into this major fight. It, it was on from there. I mean, it, we were all over the place. You, you watching you, you were so upset and something happened. And I, I have to imagine there was a combination of defending your teammates and your brothers, but also something was said and you, you, it looked like this rage, this anger. And I get why baseball players, they're intense. It's those, it's those deep, you know, locked in moments. And then something goes awry and it goes like something goes, it felt like a switch was, you know, a fuse blew, if, if you will. And Daryl Strawberry, is that accurate to say in something like that in that moment? Well, pretty much, you know, in the heat of heat of the moment, uh, everything just comes out, you know, because you're so competitive as a player and you think about your team, um, you want people to always respect who you are. And I, and I think that's really what it was about more than anything with us, because everybody hated us back in those days because of the kind of teams we had. And, and they wanted to try to find a way to have get any kind of piece of us. And sometimes it just turned out to be the wrong way. And you don't hit us, you know, that's not the way you got to beat us on the field. That's the, kind of, that's the kind of things we looked at, you know, when we got into brawls, we was like, we were very serious about that. We were very serious about protecting our teammates. It was interesting too, looking back, you know, you do your research for interviews and I went and looked back that year. That was your last year with the Mets. So this is 1990. This is obviously before Christ had entered the picture as well. You've shared your story about coming to Jesus before, I think it was 91 or 92 when you were with the Dodgers. So, who was Daryl Strawberry in 1990, 30 years old, your final year as a Met before leaving the Dodgers? Who was Daryl at that time? Uh, just a guy who uh, was uh, completely broken, uh, had everything from a material standpoint, you know, been privileged playing baseball and living a lifestyle, but, but also at the same time, just completely broken and empty on the inside, searching, searching for identity, uh, uh, I think a lot of guys end up playing sports. They stay stuck with the uniform and don't ever take it off and don't know who they are. You know, guys are still today the same way. And, and I just didn't want to be that guy anymore. I mean, I, I wanted to know, I wanted to know who I was, you know, but at that age, I didn't know who I was. And I was still one of those guys st still in the uniform and wanted to continue to achieve great things far as, as far as an athlete and, and baseball and everything but still searching for who am I as a person? I, I think that's the most important thing uh, that one can ask to himself. Who am I really? After all is said and done, after everything I accomplished, who are you? You know, and, and, and at that time, I didn't know. Uh, just signed the biggest contract when I became a free agent. And my last year with the Mets was an incredible year. And I go on to sign a five-year deal with the Dodgers, but still broken and still empty and searching, you know, searching for life, not searching for – fame, fortune, but really searching for life. I, I, re I was really searching for life and I was hurting inside. And I just, you know, I think the uniform just covers up your, your pain. You know, it, it just allows you to just kind of push it off. But I'm still broken because you, I think what, uh, what a lot of people don't understand, you're still going to take the same person, the broken pieces uh, and the broken person that you are is still going to be the same when you take that uniform off until you get healed. What's interesting, too, is I think now everybody's seen how, how far you've come. And I love just watching you every time you post on Instagram saying, hey, we're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ right now. I love it. I get excited about it every time I see you post it. But that doesn't mean you can't acknowledge those, I guess, BC days, right, before Christ to use the, that platform as a way to point others to Jesus and say, look where how far I've come. So you don't you don't completely shut those years out, right? You use them as a chance to tell others about Jesus. Of course I use that. I use the platform, you know, because it's God's platform. God gives us platforms. He gives you the ability to play sports or whatever we're going to do, work in sports like you did. And But he gives you those platforms to go back in. But you don't go back and preach to people. You just kind of live your life and, and they get to see, they get to see that from that one place to how did you get here? You know, guys are still curious you know, how did I get here? Is it really going to last? You know, and they're still waiting, you know, and it's been 17 years. It's been 17 years since they seen me turn the other way and, and walk a different way and, and not go back, you know, and I think that's, you know, that's not on wood, not on me. That's on Christ because that's what Christ does. You know, he actually changes you on the inside, you know, and I think everybody's looking for a transformation, but they just don't know the transformation has to take place on the inside. They're, they're constantly looking and searching but the outside is still there, still you. But have you had 
uh, that transformation on the inside, which is which is one is going to carry you, sustain you, is going to keep you, and it's going to lead you into your real destiny or why you were created. Mm, I love that. Daryl Strawberry is our guest here on Sports Spectrum. All right, two more baseball questions. What is your single favorite home run? I wanted to ask you this the last time when we ran out of time. What's your single favorite home run that you've hit as a Met? Because you could probably have some other ones too that you've hit with the Yankees or the Dodgers, but what's your single favorite home run that you hit as a New York Met? But it has to be that home run off of Nolan Ryan uh, because you just don't, you know, growing up as a kid and watching Nolan Ryan and knowing who he is and, and there you are standing at the plate, you know, facing him in a playoff game and he's he's throwing a gym, you know, one nothing ball game at the time. And if I don't hit that home run off of him down the right field line and tie that game up and we go on to win that game in the 10th. But, you know, you don't you don't win that game. We don't win that game. We don't hit we don't get to the series, you know, I mean, because we re realizing that we had to beat somebody because what if we had to go to a game seven, where we was going to face Mike Scott again and how many times he beat us, how, how hot was he at that time? So you got, you got to remember the importance of home runs that turned something around. And th that was one of those home runs that turned it around for us to keep us in that ball game. And I always think about that because you fear Nolan Ryan. Nolan Ryan was no joke. He was nothing to play with. You know, the way he walked around the mound and, you know, the way he stood and, and looked at you and he's like, it was like, get in the box, you know, don't play around, you know. And, and he was just one of those type of guys that was different, had a different demeanor. So that home run I hit off of him was probably one of the top home runs I probably ever hit in my career. I remember that home run. I also remember that. 1986 National League Championship Series. It's one of the great series ever. And it's fascinating to me that Mike Scott was named the NLCS MVP and they lost. Like, that's how dominant he was in that series, right? No question. You know, he just dominated in that series. And it, you can imagine, I mean, he was the MVP of the series and they lost. They went home. <laughs> we're just like, go ahead, you can keep the trophy. But we're going on our way to, uh, to the World Series here and we're going to play uh, – play for the championship, you know, and that, and that was really exciting for us because we had a great run that year. We had a great team. And it took a team effort to get past uh, the Astros, you know, because they were a good, solid team. They had, they had a lot of more players that had a lot more experience than we did, you know, but we, we kind of stayed together, and it was just our year. It was our year to make it happen, and we made it happen. It's interesting you mentioned uh, that home run turning the game around. Well, your new book is called Turn Your Season Around, which is pretty cool. How God Transforms Your Life. This book is out uh, January, and, and I'm really excited, January 12th, 2021, which is crazy because we're recording this still in 2020. But this book is going to make a lot of people, I, I think, think about Daryl Strawberry. Maybe look at him even in a different way if they're not following you on Instagram or no what God has done in your life. So let's talk about this book. Tell us about it and why you wanted to write it, Daryl. Well, actually, I didn't. Thank you for having me about that and talking about that. I didn't want to write another book. I, <laughs> I, I've had already done that before. I've been there and done that. And I was like, why am I writing another book? You know, why is people keep coming to me and asking me, to write? do I want to write another book? I didn't need to write another book. It was just like, I think my story of my last book uh, kind of, told you about my life and who I was and everything I went through. But my wife always said, you, you, you never, uh, you never thought about putting yourself in a position, letting God write a book through you about his real transformation. Mm -hmm. You know, that was just your autobiography that you was strong, you know? And so this book came about and God just kept dropping it in me. And then I finally decided, well, let's just go ahead and write it. And it goes, well, what's going to be the title? I says, well, the Holy Spirit told me, it says, turn your season around. And I want nine innings, you know, nine chapters, nine innings, make it like a baseball game. And, and to be able to talk from, you know, one inning, because anything, anything can happen in a season. You know, anything can happen in a ball game, too, with nine innings. You know, when you think about it, but I'm talking about the season of life. Little did I know I would write a book called Turn Your Season Around, and we would go into a season like we've been in with a pandemic, and COVID-19 and, and we, would, we would be sitting on, on the bricks of the country, divided, uh, racial tensions, racial issues, and uh, just separated. And God would, God would call me to write a book in the middle of all that happening, not knowing that it would happen. And it would be called Turn Your Season Around. Because the Turn Your Season Around is just not a book 
it, it's one that's it's one that's dedicated is dedicated to God by God and and for God. You know, and when when you start understanding that as a Christian, and when you start opening the pages and you're reading, you're gonna be like, well, you know, this is really different here because it's gonna challenge you because it's it's got a lot of scriptures in it, and it, it it's ta- it's coming from a perspective of where. I, I preach the gospel and the way I live and, and, and how God transformed your life if you decide to follow him. Because God really transformed your life completely when you truly decide to follow him. Absolutely. Again, the book is called Turn Your Season Around. And even though there are sort of chapters mentioned, like you said, as innings, like there's nine chapters, nine innings, there's very little baseball in the book. You you reference baseball, but it's really focused on who Jesus is and the scriptures and the gospel. That's intentional, isn't it? That's intentional. Yeah. Cause we got to get, we got to get away because people can write books and you're, are you writing them just to have a story so they can sell? So you can, what kind of impact does the book have? You know, I've already had that impact with straw. This book, this book will challenge you. This book would bring you to a place to say, am I right in my heart with God? If God, this is how God transformed this man's life. And if he did it for him, he could do it for me. But, you're going to have to make some changes. And I think that's the hard part of people doing. And that's also a hard part of people reading a book like this, because they're going to realize that God really has changed me. You know, I have been sitting on the other side of life for a very long time. It hasn't been just a short time. I could see if it was like two or three years, they could be like, Oh, what is he talking about? But you know, you're talking about like 17 years of, you know, moving forward and doing ministry and, and, and staying the course and, and never looking back. Life showing, you got to show up because life going to show up. You know, I, I think so many people think because you're a Christian, life is not going to show up. There's going to be some, you know, there's going to be some trials. There's going to be some tribulations. There's going to be some pressing through uh, to get through. You got to get through to get on the other side. And, and that's what this book has done for me. I, and I remember as I started writing and I started really enjoying it, enjoying the part of with my writer Lee Weeks, you know, Weeks, you yeah. know, going together and putting this project together because uh, we started to dive into some real stuff, you know, and some real talk about uh, faith and, and, and Christ. And, and, and also, you know, you, you talk about how, how you have, how you have to get to a place where you got to be persistent going after God and then you got to surrender. You got to surrender. You, you got to, you know, it's, it's just, it's just going to show challenge people in those areas with their life of how do you get there? How do you do this? It's, it's a lot of surrendering and still at the same time, you got to be persistent to continue to go after God. One of the chapters is the fourth inning chapter, if you will, is, is called reveal your scars. You've done that. Why is that important for people to think about revealing their scars as they enter into uh, a place of being truly surrendering to Christ? Well, because God already knows. He already knows the scars that we all have. And I think right. the problem is with, I think the problem with so many of us, Jason, we don't want people to look at us and say, oh, I had this problem, I had that problem. That doesn't matter because Jesus is the healer of all things at the end of the day. So whatever, whatever could kill us, he's already killed. He's killed it on the cross for you. So it's just being able to stand up and, and being able to be op- open about who you are and what you've been through. Because you, you'll understand it once you start walking with God that it's no longer about you anyway anymore because so many of us think it's about us and I don't really want people to know, you know, my stuff and everything. Well, you'll never be able to help nobody else because your brokenness or your emptiness, when God transform you, it helps somebody else because somebody else is broken. Somebody else is empty. And that that's what the hope uh, of, of what it is to bring, bring to somebody else. It's not about you. I think we get caught up in this about us and, you know, we're afraid to talk about who we really are and what we go through. Listen, we all got some mess in, in our families. If if you if you're born here, you got some mess in, in in the families from somewhere. Somebody's somebody's been screwed up in the generation line, and you or somebody else, and, and it's just part of it's it's part of the deal that we have to come to and uh, of the reality is that we all have fallen short and we all need God's grace. Today's Sports Spectrum show is presented and brought to you by Ronald Blue Trust. And Ronald Blue Trust, as we mentioned, their advisor is applying biblical wisdom, technical expertise, helping their clients make wise financial decisions to experience clarity and confidence, leaving a lasting legacy. We all have questions right now regarding our finances, and they serve people 
across the wealth spectrum, from individuals who need everyday financial advice to multi-generational families who require complex family office services, and even business owners who need custom consulting. Their advisors are in 16 offices around the country providing a complement of services, including financial retirement and estate planning, investment management, charitable giving strategies, bill paying, family offices, professional athlete services, institutional services, and even retirement plan consulting. We love Ronald Blue Trust, and I love that word trust because that's what you can do when we're talking about Ron Blue. Ronald Blue Trust. They build strong relationships with their clients on trust, speak into their financial lives, and walk with them to help them realize financial and life goals. You got questions, they got answers. Reach out to them right now on their website, ronblue.com. Check them out at Ronald Blue Trust, ronblue.com. We're talking to Daryl Strawberry here on Sports Spectrum. And again, the new book is called Turn Your Season Around. In the book, you write, I use SIN as an acronym for self-indulgence now. Every time we choose our way over God's way, we sin. Sin always takes us further than we need to go, keeps us longer than we want to stay, and costs us more than we can afford to pay. Man. That's so good, Daryl. Can you expand on that and the self-indulgence life that so many of us struggle with away from God, and especially that SIN acronym that you use? I love it. Self-indulgence now. Self-indulgence. Yeah, that's it. It's, we all struggle. We all struggle with that, you know, and we all have to come to the point of realizing that that's why we need Christ, because he's our helper and he helps us get through uh, some of the most difficult challenges, difficult times in life. And, and, when we continue to grow in him and continue to follow uh, the principles, that's where the change come about. Because we're all sinners. We all gonna fall short. It's, and we're gonna keep falling short until, you know, until the end of our life and we're out of here. But we don't stay there, you know, and that's the difference, I think, uh, for so many of them. I've seen so many Christians, you know, that have uh, been where I, I'm at today, been excited about it, but they went, they went back, they went to the left and went back and they never come back because now all of a sudden shame and guilt and everything comes across you but there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus he's not he's not condemning you you know he's saying come come back come back to whatever you do and that's the message of you know whatever one is going through and one is facing is is to remember always come back don't stay I've seen so many people that just never come back and they stay you know they loved God at once about a time and all of a sudden you know they got um they got into a lifestyle of doing something different and, and changed who they were and they walked and they never returned back because they said, well, I guess they think, well, this God thing don't work because there's not a lot of excitement. I'm not, I'm not having the fun uh, like I was having out there. Well, the devil's alive. It's, it's so much greater on this side when you stay on the side and you deal with the things that you need to deal with. It's interesting too. You wrote, uh, you mentioned the 86 NLCS and the Homer off Nolan Ryan, and you wrote about the 86 NLCS and the victory over the Astros even though their pitchers dominated you guys, as you said, and you write about that, you used it as a lesson in life for all of us not to dwell on past mistakes. That's important, right? Not dwelling on those past mistakes. No question about it. It's very important not to dwell on the past mistakes. Because I, do, I dwelled on them for a long time. And, you know, when you're dwelling in that, that means, well, you need to be delivered. You know, I think, cause, you know, because there's a deliverance that has to take place. Of, of knowing that you knew every day, you know, and, and that's the wake up call every day is to wake up and be new, think new, think different, think big, uh, think about um, who you are, what you, what you're called to do. And, and if you think about the past, see, I, that's that second Corinthians uh, five seventeen. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things come new. So many of us hold on to the old things and we can't come to, we can't walk in the new. You know, God's got something new for you every day when you wake up, a, a new experience for you, a new joy, a new opportunity for you. But if I'm holding on to the past, that's going to always haunt. It's going to always be there talking in my, that little, little man on the shoulder called the <laughs> devil. Gonna be, <laughs> you're going to be talking about what well, used to be this, you used to be that. I remember when I first started, when I got called to ministry and I first started preaching, the devil said, you you can't, you're not, who do you think you are? You're going to preach the gospel. Don't you know where you came from? yeah, I came out of the pit, but I've been saved by grace. And once I started to understand it, that started to unfold in my life and everything. But you have to be able to understand it. How, how do you understand it? Clearly, you don't understand it by your own self. You have to understand it through the word of God. You know, if, you, if you're not 
you know, plugging yourself in the word or saturating yourself in the word, then you'll never understand that the old, the old you is dead. He no longer lives. He can't, he can't come this way because he's died and he's been crucified. So when you, when you understand that, that you've been crucified and you move on, you spring forward every day, you wake up with this excitement and this joy, you know, this, that I could do something great for the Lord. I could tell somebody how good Jesus really is. I want to ask you, Daryl, about discipleship, because that's such an important aspect of our walk as followers of Christ, especially for men. That's a struggle for men to be discipled. What did that look like for you 2003? I mean, even 1991, when you first said yes to Christ, but into 2003. And then what does that look like for you today? Because you're at a different stage of your journey in your walk with the Lord. But yet it's still important, I think, to not only disciple others, which is the Great Commission, uh, but to be discipled and to have someone pouring into you. So what does that look like for you in terms of discipleship, Daryl? Well, that's, that's, that's a really good question because that's really important. And like you said, most men don't connect in those areas because they don't want nobody to know who they are. They don't want nobody to know that they have to overcome stuff because we're very prideful, you know, the ego driven, you know, oh, I, I can handle it. Yeah, that's what I thought. In 91, I accepted Christ. Poo. Oh, Jesus is Lord. But, you know, and, and there I was running, running, running off with Jesus as Lord and had no discipleship. And guess what? The enemy came and, and immediately, you know, he, he, he came to just take me right back to where I was at because there was no foundation. See, what people don't understand, discipleship is a real foundation, real foundation of your faith, your walk, and, and, and how, do you, how do you live your life out in the society that we have to live because the enemy's not going anywhere. He's going to always be there. But now knowing that I didn't know that when I accepted Christ and there I was, he pulled me back for another 10 years or so of hell and torment and tormented my life. And it was just, I was completely lost. And then you come to this place where, okay, I needed to do it right. So what is discipleship? Discipleship was like going to, going to church. Yeah. You go to church on Sundays, but you go to Bible studies on Wednesday, but you, you sit in the back, you take notes and you learn. You know, learning, the learning part of who Christ is, is the, is the key uh, of discipleships and the connections that you, uh, that you make along those lines when you're moving forward. And what, what I mean by that, Jason, I'm saying, you will have to let some folks go. See, all the guys I play with, they, where are they now? They're gone. You know, they, because why? Because you're going to have to let some people go. You're going to have to walk away from some friendships or relationships with people and say, well, this is no longer going to be a part of who I am. I got to continue to go this way and go forward. And I got to stay with the right people and stay connected with the right people. Because if you don't stay connected with the right people, you're going back. You know, that's just the way it is. Because there's, there's not enough power inside of you to keep you, not keep you from going back. If you don't, if you don't have the strength, you don't have the wisdom, you don't have the knowledge of the word of God. So what's that look like for you now? discipleship because you're pouring into so many like you're traveling around the country even in a pandemic you're still making appearances through zoom or facebook or all these different places <laughs> that i've seen and then now as things start to open back up you're traveling and you're still pouring into so many people but who pours into daryl strawberry every day that's good i mean I, i'm glad you asked that my wife she pours into me every day you know so but uh also you know our, our pastor in the church i go to uh, local church uh, out where we live in Troy, uh, it's Troy, Missouri. We live in O'Fallon, but we go to a, a, a smaller church, about seven, eight hundred people, and it's just incredible people. And you know, when I when, I, when I'm home, I I go to church to be fed. I don't go anywhere else. I I, I that's important. That's important that I don't, I don't come there to preach. I don't want to preach. I mean, you know, he'd be trying to get me. Do you want to you want to preach? I'd be like, no, I need to, I need you to feed me. I need to hear somebody else, you know, share the good news because that's. That's where faith comes in, you know, so does faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God, you know, and, and people don't understand that you can hear it from other people and you can see other people talk about their life and, and their walk with Christ. And that's how, that's how you get, that's how you get strong. That's, that's how you stay strong. You, you stay strong when you make real friends, new friends, and people are like-minded, just like you think like you. Uh, and we live for the same purpose. We live to glorify God. How cool is it? when someone who roots for you as a baseball player comes up to you and shares a story that they heard you talk about Jesus and now they're walking with Jesus. I got to imagine that's a pretty cool thing to see God work in that way. That, that's the coolest, you know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, 
<laughs> that's far greater than you know. That's far greater than somebody wanting an autograph, but you know, or something like that, and take a picture. Um, that is so so incredible, you know, to have that feeling in someone. Because a lot of people have had the opportunity to see me walking through airports, and they goes, "Oh no, I'm, I, I just want to say hi. I just really impressed with with your life, you know, not your baseball career, but your life." And I, I thank God for that, you know, because it it speaks speaks loud so people can understand that it's real, that you could be changed. It doesn't matter how far you go down and uh, where you've been, you know, God, God still have a, has a plan for you. And that's what I think is was so important uh, to understand that when I see people and I always thank people and really appreciate that when they say that. I think it's great. I think it's really cool. I got to ask you about two, about 2020 um, and going through this pandemic that we've gone through. You mentioned the racial unrest, the political divide. Um, it's deep and it's wide, and yet Christ is still on the throne. But I'm curious for you, how has this year been as far as your walk with the Lord? How has it deepened your faith? How has it challenged you? What was 2020 like for Daryl Strawberry? Well, actually, it turned out to be a pretty awesome, pretty amazing, you know, uh, due to the fact that, you know, I was traveling so much before and, and I was physically burned out, you know, just tired, you know. And I, and I think when this this came, you know, it, it just allowed me to stay home and be home and not go anywhere and rest and get plenty of rest and get my strength back and everything. But also at the same time, I saturated myself in the word. I just laid home with God. You know, I didn't I just didn't, you know, take it for granted, you know, that this is you know, I am who I am, but like that, I didn't want to, I didn't want to think like that. I, I wanted to realize that I take this, this time that we've all had out because every, because you, when you understand everybody's had to stop. So what does that mean? When you stop there's quiet time and what are you doing in your quiet time? My quiet time was getting closer to God. And I tell you, God empowered me in such a different way this time because I spent six months away um, at home and not traveling and not ministering to nobody. And it, it was pretty pretty cool for me to be able to go through that process. It was, it was a hard process for all of us at the same time. But at the same time, you know, taking time out and, and getting my body some rest and, and getting myself in, in a better place and just a lot of clarity came, you know, through – through the six months of just sitting around at home. It's funny talking to my wife, Dawn, you've met my wife. Um, you know, there's a lot of good in being able to be closer to your family during this time where we all have to pause and there's not a lot of traveling, but there's been some times where she's like, just get out of the house. And she wants to kick <laughs> me out. Is Tracy like that with you sometimes too? <laughs> so I, well, she, when I started playing, wanted to go play golf, she was like, go, you just go with your friends. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's, it's something that we have to do and, you know, even even going through the pandemic like we were, you know, uh, we have to be able to get out and, and just be a man. You know, that's very important. Yeah, that's important. Daryl Strawberry has yeah. been our guest. His new book is called Turn Your Season Around, How God Transforms Your Life. And it's out in January, January 12th, 2021. All right. So at this stage of life, as we wind down here, Daryl, 58, going on 59 in March of 2021, if I'm doing my math right, what's the one thing that you would hope people would see when they think of the life that Daryl Strawberry has lived now, which is so much about what this book is about. What's the one thing that you would hope people will see? I hope they will see that God is real and, and that God is good and, and that his grace is sufficient. Um, that is something that we don't deserve and, and he gives it to us anyway. I, I think a lot of people, um, run off in life and they think, well, this is just the way it's supposed to be, you know, and people are, are, are frustrated uh, today on either side, you know, with what's happened in the country, you know, with the election and stuff like that. God, Jesus is still on the throne. He's king, you know, and I think if they can run to him like they run to everything else, then your life will be fulfilled. You're the fullness of who you are. You will understand why you're here. And I think so many so many of us don't understand why we're here. You know, we think it's about, you know, this. We think it's about being successful. We think it's about that. But it's really not. It, it's about coming here and having a personal relationship and commitment with Christ himself so he can transform your life so you can go and help somebody else. Because when, when, you, when, you when you look back, and, and, and when I look back, because I like old videos, and my old videos of watching preachers is the one and only Billy Graham. 
okay, what was Billy Graham about? He was about winning souls. What have we got? We've gotten away from winning souls. We've gotten into make one of sound good, feel good, and oh, you can live any kind of way. You can do any kind of way. You can stand in a pulpit and you can sound any kind of way. Oh, you sound good, but the devil is not fooled by you. <laughs> he knows if you don't know God's word and God's will, he knows he's going to put a chokehold on you and he's going to strangle you. So I would say to people, you know, get your heart right. Give God your heart for real. Now, you know, now he doesn't. He doesn't need anything. He don't, he don't need nothing from me. He has everything. I think too many of us think, well, well, if I come and I have to follow God, that means I have to change. Yes, you have to change. <laughs> Let's make that clear. You, you will have to change. And if you don't want to change, you can stay on the other side. If you want to straddle that fence, you can straddle that fence, but you'll never be victorious in Christ Jesus until you surrender your heart to him and let him be Lord over your life. That's, man, that's awesome, man. Um, I've never really done this much on the show, but I'm going to ask you if you'd be willing. Um, we have a lot of people that listen to this show, a lot of uh, you know, coaches, athletes, parents, families, people on both sides of whatever side that people want to call it. Um, <laughs> I'm wondering if you could just pray us out and maybe there's a prayer that God's laid on your heart to, to share uh, as we close here. Would that be okay? That'd be great. Father, we come to you right now and we just say thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love. And Father, we know that we are in some very difficult, challenging times right now. The unknown, Father, that rests in people's hearts, Father, on each side, you know, what's happening in the country. Um, Father, we just ask that you would hover over us and that you would touch us in a way like never before. Father, strengthen us because we all need you. And there are some that just really straddle on the fence and there are some that don't know you completely and may us as believers be a light to the darkness that is shining. And Father, the enemy is hovering over this nation and we pray over it right now. We pray for your peace, your peace that will surpass uh, all understanding. We pray for reconciliation that it would come about where people would love each other and care for each other and respect for each other father father we've gotten away from your principles forgive us may we repent to you as a nation as people may our young people father come to have a great understanding who you are they have found themselves father in so many different social media outlets and don't even know that Jesus is Lord. And we pray that families will come back together and have table talks at the dinner table and um, real talks about the good news, not about the craziness of everything that's in front of us. We know that the enemy is real. We know in John 10, 10, Jesus said, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. And he said, I have come that they may have life and may, may have it more abundantly. Father, may we understand an abundant life. Abundant life is not stuff, success, fame. It's peace, joy, wisdom, knowledge, far greater than anything that you will give to us. And we thank you for it. We thank you that you are such a merciful God, Father. And Father, we just pray for this nation right now. We pray for uh, a, a tremendous healing over this nation because it's, it's needed at such a time and such an hour of this. We be sure to give you all the glory and all the honor and everything that we pray for. And we send this petition up to you, Father, and we ask that you seal it and that you will cover us in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Amen. He is Daryl Strawberry. Turn Your Season Around is the book, released January 12th. Go get it. Go get a copy. Go get five copies. Go get 18 <laughs> copies. That's a good number, 18. And, uh, and, and tell someone else to go get their copy. So, yeah, you like that number 18, right, Daryl? I love num number 18. I had eight in high school, but I, I was going to wear it in the big leagues. But I, when I got there, somebody else had it at the time. And and I probably would have had to give it up anyway because Carter came over and he was number eight. So <laughs> that's okay. Eighteen yeah. worked. Eighteen suited you well. I think it did. Eight, eighteen works well, and yeah, eighteen worked well, and I appreciate that. Daryl, love you, my friend. Thanks for being on the show. Always great to catch up with you, and I'm sure we'll be talking again soon. Thanks, brother. I love you too, brother. Appreciate you, Jace. And many thanks to my friend Daryl Strawberry for joining us here today on Sports Spectrum. Returning to the show. 
This is our third or fourth time he's been on the show. We've been able to do a few interviews in person. And of course, we had him on way back when, two or three years ago, uh, for the first time. That was the first time I ever interviewed Daryl. And just being quite honest here, I was very nervous because that guy is a childhood hero. But he's also become a good friend of mine. And as I said in the beginning of the show, all he wants to do is talk about Jesus. He doesn't want to talk about the Mets or the Yankees or World Series or home runs or anything about his baseball career. I mean, he understands the platform, and so he will talk about it. But when people ask him about Jesus, that's when he lights up, and that's where he gets passionate. That's where he gets excited, and uh, that's why I love what he uh, stands for. He stands for Christ, and that's all he wants to do is tell others about Jesus. So it's pretty cool that we had Daryl back on the show. Uh, make sure you go get his new book. Turn Your Season Around, available January 12th, 2021. Turn Your Season Around by Daryl Strawberry. And then go follow him on Instagram. He's at Daryl Strawberry 18, Daryl Strawberry 18 on Instagram. And he's very active on Instagram, which is pretty cool to see. Uh, Daryl Strawberry, you know, he uses Instagram as his one platform on social media to share videos, to share encouragement, to share pictures. He shares some baseball stuff on there too. But again, he's sharing a lot about Jesus and encouraging people in their walks with the Lord. So many thanks to Daryl for being here again on Sports Spectrum. We really do appreciate him joining us on the show. We also appreciate our partners and sponsors today, Ronald Blue Trust. Go check them out at ronblue.com as they apply biblical wisdom and technical expertise to help their clients make these wise financial decisions that we all need to be thinking about making here in the new year of 2021 so that we'll experience clarity and confidence and leave a lasting legacy. Check them out at ronblue.com for all of your financial concerns, questions, and needs, ronblue.com. Thanks again for tuning in to our show. Uh, it really does mean a lot. And uh, if you do us a favor, before we say goodbye, click that subscribe button on the podcast app that you're listening to this show on right now, if you could, click that subscribe button. That way you never miss an episode of Sports Spectrum's podcast. We have, I don't know how many episodes now, I think we're up to close to 650 or so episodes of the show. Uh, it's coming up on four years, we're over 2 million downloads, it's just been a wild ride to think that there will be an audience that would want to listen to any kind of show that I would host. Uh, but it's all God, right? That's what we do. That's what we're about. We're trying to bring Jesus back into the conversation with interviews like the one we did today with Daryl Strawberry. And so do us a favor, click that subscribe button and then tell someone about the Sports Spectrum podcast and have them listen to uh, this show. Hopefully it encourages them and maybe it sparks a conversation or maybe sparks questions that can be discussed. And who knows, maybe it helps lead someone to Jesus. That's our goal. Like Daryl said, that's what it's about, winning souls for Jesus Christ. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. Really appreciate it, and we'll see you next time right here on Sports Spectrum. I hope you all have a great rest of your day.